Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, our favorite day of the week here at Pathway, where we journey together in faith. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If it's your first time with us, don't forget to fill out a connection card found in a few back in front of you or on our website. That's just so we can stay connected and get you plugged in. We also have prayer cards. The staff prays over everyone every single week. And we have gift cards, scan the QR code to give easily online. We just have a few announcements before we get started. Tuesday, October 15th at 5 p.m., we're going to have dinner together and then do a church cleanup inside and out, hopefully. We really need a lot of people for this event, so a lot of hands make for light work. We would love to have you join us. There's a sign-up at the Opportunities Desk. We are so excited because this winter we are doing a Christmas pageant for kids. We're so excited for this program. It's going to be a lot of singing and spoken pieces, and they're going to be learning about Christmas around the world. So if you have people you know, first grade through eighth grade, and if they're interested in singing or programs like this, definitely don't forget about this. There will be auditions. There's more information at the Opportunities Desk, at the Welcome Desk, and you can call the office or talk to Elsie anytime. We're currently doing Operation Christmas Child. This is a ministry where we get gifts for kids that wouldn't necessarily get gifts for Christmas. So you can pick up a shoebox in the fellowship hall and there's some more information around those shoeboxes, like what you can put inside. So if you have any questions, you can contact the office. Our church rummage sale is coming up so soon, Wednesday through Friday of this week. You can donate items today or tomorrow only, unless you've talked to Will. We still need lots of help for this event, so don't forget to check out our sign up at the Opportunities Desk. Last but certainly not least, please don't forget to check out our website and our social media to stay updated. And also go ahead and stop by the Opportunities Desk. We have so many different things that you can sign up for, like our women's Bible studies, soup kitchen, sewing ministry, coffee time, altar flowers, and more. So please, please, please check that out. And thank you so much for getting involved. I think that's enough announcements for this morning. Let's continue to worship. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand and sing together.
Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I go, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. How your kindness yet pursues me, how your mercy never fails me, to the day that death shall lose me, I will sing, oh I will sing. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Oh, your kindness yet pursues me. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be gathering here in your name. We are thankful to raise you up as our creator and the ultimate power and presence in our life. We ask that you remember that our hearts have been sealed. We have been burned with your love. We have been marked as your children. Help us to remember that as we live each day and each moment to know that we are living a life of victory, a life of rejuvenation, a life of blessings. And as we are in the world, help us to be not part of it, but your shining light and a help, empathy, empathy help each, helping each wanderer find your path. 
It's through your son we pray. Amen. You all can take a seat. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to dismiss the kids to Children's Church. Uh, and while they're out on their way out, I just want to say, good morning, everybody. Good morning. You've had your coffee. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Will Flaherty, and I serve here as the Director of Children and Youth Ministry, which means today you are all my children. Um, I also know some of you are looking up here and go, there's something different about Will. Yes, I did get contacts. Um, no, I'm in a show. Facial hair is different. I had people staring during the first service. So I'm like, I'm going to say something. Well, this morning we're going to be wrapping up a series that we've been in since the beginning of the month where we've taken a look at our mission and our vision statements. Just as a reminder, our vision statement is one that I, anytime I do video announcements, I try to say is we journey together in faith. That is what we try to do. We try to go on this journey of life together, holding on to the God that created the universe because we are on this journey together. And then we've been going over the last few weeks our mission statement, and our mission statement is still rather new, so I'm going to go over it once more for you guys. It is, we are a family of believers, helping all pursue the way, seek the truth, and find new life in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So again, this is our mission statement. This is everything we do as Pathway Church should fit within the context of this. Two weeks ago, Pastor Dan talked about what does it mean to be on this path of eternity and how to stay on it when the forces of this world are trying to grab you and pull you off it whatever way they can. And then last week, Savannah, our director of adult and care ministries, talked about what does it mean to seek the truth and what does it mean to share the truth in love and not living only in partial truths, but the whole truth that God tells us. Well, today I have the opportunity to kind of wrap up this series by talking about the final part of our mission statement, which is what does it mean to find new life? So, if we as a church say that what we should be doing is help ourselves and others pursue this path that leads to God, seek the truth that exists in Him and bring about new life because of it, the first and most important thing I think we need to realize in that is none of us can do it by our own strength and our own merit, right? None of us can do what every, everything it takes to fully make ourselves whole and right again. Anybody here ever uh, renovate a house before? I see John Tucker in the back. I know he has a lot of experience with this. Uh, but when you renovate a house, you can take down the drywall and the plaster. You can take down the fixtures and the sockets and the wiring and everything. But at the core of everything the frame is still the same, the studs are still the same, the foundation is still the same. And in the same way, when we try to get our lives together by only our own power, we can do a really good job changing the facade, right? We can change how things look on the outside, we can make it look to everybody like we've got everything together, but at the core of who we are, the frame and the structure is still the same, is it not? When we want to get ourselves right, when we want to find a way to follow the way maker, the one that gives us the path, that gives us the truth that we follow, we have this problem. We have this thing that exists in the core of who we are called sin. This separation, this brokenness that has existed since Adam and Eve first ate from the fruit and has existed throughout mankind. At the very core, our foundation has issues. Our foundation has a problem that needs to be addressed because the truth of the matter is that because of the foundational issues we have from the moment we're born, unless we do something, well, not us, but we'll get to that, unless we change something about the core of who we are, we are on a path that only leads to death and destruction. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Man was originally supposed to exist in community with God forever. We were supposed to have life everlasting. We were never supposed to perish but live with God. But then we messed up. We took something that was perfect and holy and good and said, no, we think we can do better than that. And again, we can make things look for the longest time like they're great, they're grand, they're wonderful. How many of you like receiving flowers for any occasion? Got some hands coming up. These flowers right here look beautiful, do they not? But the unfortunate truth of these flowers is that they're already dead. From the moment they're cut off from the source of their life, they begin to die. They will eventually, within a few days, wither and crumble. And we can preserve them, but they still do not have that source of life. 
And just like these flowers, there is absolutely nothing that any of us can do to reattach ourselves to the source of life. Nothing that we do. The only thing that could have happened is Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ living in this world, by living a sinless life, and by going to the cross, he is able to reattach us to the source of life, which is God the Father. Again, if we look at Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I could stop my message there, and that is the most beautiful and perfect and holy truth in the scriptures, that Jesus Christ came so that we can be reconnected with God and live with him forever. I could let you all go and get ready for football this afternoon. (laughs) But there's more to this. There is so much more to this inheritance that we get when we put on Christ, when we are made new, when God takes that core issue that we have in our very foundation, says, no, I can make this a good and solid and firm foundation that you can put yourself on and that you can be wholly made new. He does not want to renovate us. He wants to recreate us. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17 through 19 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to this message of reconciliation. That is such a beautiful truth, something that can give us hope that God is in the business of the ministry of reconciliation. Because again, if we are all created in the very image of God, if he made each of us beautifully and uniquely, even though we have this sin living inside us, we have this power of God that exists within all of mankind, but we have this sin that exists within us, and these are dueling natures within ourselves. It is like putting a cat and a dog in the same room together and watching them just chase each other. The two exist in conflict and chaos. There can never be any time of peace, never any time of rest, because there's so much going on within the turmoil of our own hearts and our own lives. But God says, no, I want to take this internal conflict, this internal duality between you were created in the image of God, but you have this sin that exists in your heart. I want to make you whole. I want to remove this sin that that you've experienced And I want to make you new. God wants to separate us from the darkness that takes control of us. Because the old has gone, the new has come. So if this is our mission of Pathway Church, to help others find new life in Jesus Christ, and we know that to be the truth, we need to take the truth of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God who loves mankind so much to the point where he was willing to offer us this path to reconciliation through his death and resurrection. And we need to spread the word to everyone around us, right? There are some people, and this is one of my biggest issues with the capital C church in today's day and age, and it's not just a today thing. It has reached back for hundreds of years, is that we pick and choose who we share the love of God with, don't we? There have been times in our lives where we've thought, oh, they just need to get their life together and then I'll share this beautiful truth with them. Or they don't think or look or act the same way I do, so why should it be my job to take the message of Jesus Christ, this ministry of reconciliation to them? But I heard something recently and it struck me down to my very core. And it's this. Every saint has a past. And every sinner has the potential for a future. I'm going to say that again. Every saint has a past, and every sinner has the hope for a future. I think of someone, as I read through Scripture, who was so opposed to the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ that he went on to to interrogate and imprison and persecute believers of Jesus Christ and followers of the way to the point where he was writing letters of execution so they could be put to death for their beliefs. This is a person by the name of Saul. Now Saul had his thoughts. He had his opinions. He thought what he thought was right. And if I was a follower of Jesus Christ in that day and age, I don't know if I'd want to go and share the message of love with Paul or of Saul because I would be afraid. 
I would let the human fears of this world keep me from sharing this truth with him. But as many of you know, Saul didn't stay Saul. He encountered Jesus along the road, and he said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you trying to hold down my people And when we are going to go on to do such amazing and beautiful and powerful things? And the scriptures say that Saul literally was blinded. Things like scales came over his eyes. And he went into a nearby town. And then God approached somebody named Ananias. said, hey, go to this guy. Pray for him. Tell him that I have a purpose for him. And open his eyes. Both literally and spiritually open his eyes. And I don't know about you. If I was Ananias, I would have some concerns. But he was faithful. He knew that Ananias knew that he was being called to share what a new life in Jesus Christ looked like with Saul. And Saul, upon experiencing Jesus Christ and accepting him into his life, the scales fell away from his eyes, his eyes were open, and he went on to change his name to Paul and go on to do so many amazing and miraculous things, did he not? A good chunk of the New Testament is written from letters from Paul. He went on multiple missionary journeys because he was like, this is the truth that I have experienced. I need to go take this to others. Other people need to know what I have experienced. People need to find this renewing spirit that I have found. So when we don't share Jesus Christ, when we don't offer people this new life, what are we robbing them of? First of all, we're robbing them of an eternal life with the God that created them. But also we have no idea how they might go on to do amazing and powerful and miraculous things. By not sharing the love of Jesus Christ, are we robbing the world of the next potential Paul? We have seen firsthand the power of God at work in transforming the lives of everybody around us. But when we focus so much on how people aren't where they should be, we lose sight of this mission of God, right? How many of us would want everybody in this room to know us for how we were at our worst days? I know I wouldn't. If I was in my worst days, I would not be comfortable standing up here and talking to you guys about this. But the truth of the matter is we are not defined by our worst days, but we allow those experiences to propel us forward and learn from them and grow in them and use these experiences Not to hold us back, but to propel us into the future. We are new creations. We are people that do not have to worry about the experiences of our past. When Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, the woman goes, how do I inherit this this wellspring of water that you talk about so I don't have to come here day after day? And what does he say? Go get your husband, bring him back, I'll tell you. And she goes, well... I don't have a husband. He goes, you're right, you've had five, and the man you're living with now is not your husband either. But I don't judge you for the things you've done in the past. I still offer you this wellspring of water to come welling up within you, to offer you freedom, to offer you peace, to offer you refreshment in a world that is full of people that need reconciliation. We live in a world where it is so easy to hang on to our own thoughts and our own beliefs and to get so hurt and offended by something that we do not allow the reconciliation of Jesus Christ not to only work through our lives and through our heart, but through our situations as well. Because if Jesus Christ can forgive me for the worst I have done, it is only right that we forgive others around us when we mess up, when we fall short, because we are human. We will make mistakes, but every single day we have the opportunity to put on Christ. The book of Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says this, Then Jesus said to the crowd, If any of you want to be my followers, you must give up your own way, take up my cross daily, and follow me. What does this mean in this context? I believe Jesus is saying, first of all, to follow him we need to put our own selves aside. He says it plainly. We, need to, we must give up our own way because if we're following the path of Jesus, that is, only, that is a one-way path. His path does not fork to the left or the right. It does not take a detour. It is a path that leads immediately to God that we are on. And the enemy would like nothing more than try to pull us off of that path, right? We must give up our own way and take up our cross daily and follow him. And it's that daily that reminds me that every single day when we wake up, 
We are not the same person that we were before. We are on an everyday journey to follow the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to every day put on our new life, to put on the hope that comes only from Jesus, not to be held back by the mistakes of our past, but to use them to learn and teach and help people grow. Because maybe the experiences of our past that we have been forgiven from, that we have been released from, can help others going through the exact same thing when they're enduring the heartaches and the hardships that this world can seem to throw at them. How many people might think that somebody who is actively using drugs or is an alcoholic is not worthy to receive this new life because they are wasting their own? But at the same time, we have heard amazing stories about how God has rescued people from their addictions and they have gone on to help set others free from the same shackles that held them down. How many times do we look at somebody and go, the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they act is not like me, so I'm going to let somebody else worry about them. Friends, I work with high school and middle school students. The way they act, the way they talk, people are afraid of them sometimes. I see them for who they are. I see them as beloved sons and daughters of the Most High God. I see that they have purpose, that they have a future, and that one day one of them might be standing in the exact spot I'm standing in now, telling the same truths that we have held on to for almost 2,000 years. We never should have to wait for somebody to get their life together to share this new life with them. If we truly want to represent God, we meet people where they are. Like meeting somebody who is paralyzed by a, by a well. By meeting somebody who is blind. By meeting somebody whose friends want so badly for him to be healed, they crawl up on a roof and lower him down. By meeting with sinners and tax collectors and people that in the time thought, these are the worst of society. Guess what? God loves them as much as he loves each and every person here. And he created them with a joyous purpose. And we get the privilege of helping them guide the way. Before I wrap up this message, there are two other parts of our mission statement I kind of want to highlight. The first is how does it start? We are a family of believers. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Now, do families always get along? How many people have had more than one very tense Christmas or Thanksgiving? We have a few people. There are going to be times where families butt heads, they clash, they quarrel, they do not see eye to eye. But if we are working toward the same goal of helping people reach this path to seek the truth and find new life, our ways may differ, but if we can agree on the goal and we can agree on where we're heading... I think that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to work together. He wants us to help cover each other's weaknesses with our strengths and vice versa. And we're not always going to agree. We're not always going to see eye to eye with everybody. Because if we did, we would not have free will. We would not have autonomy. We would be lifeless drones just following marching orders. And that's not how God created us. He created us, all of us, uniquely, beautifully, wonderfully, stubbornly. Uh, but he loves us for who we are. And we should love each other in that same way. Because heaven's going to be filled with people of every race, creed, color, and religion. Well, not religion. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> because we believe there is one true God. And the other thing that we believe as a church is we believe we serve a triune God. A God that is the same in essence and substance, but different in form and function. We have God the Father who is the creator and sustainer of all things, who holds the authority. We have the Son who gave up his own authority to come to this world to offer us this new life. And we have the Spirit of God that dwells within each of us when we, when we put on this new life to help guide us, to help turn us toward the path that we're supposed to be on, and to help do the work of God in our world. We are people that the Father has saved by the Son and are guided by the Spirit. So what is our job at Pathway Church? What is our job as followers of the way, people who have been saved, by the, made clean by the blood of Jesus Christ? Our job is to keep ourselves on this path that God wants us to be on and helping each other stay focused on this path when the forces of the world are trying to tear us off of it. It is speaking the truth in love and helping each other grow and help correct each other and stay mature in our faith 
and to help ourselves and others every single day realize that we are a new creation in God. And the mistakes that we made before are not held against us. Again, the verse in 2 Corinthians says, our sins of the past are not held against us because we are new creations. At the very foundation of who we are, at the very core of our being, when we have Christ, the sin, the darkness, the brokenness is taken away and we are made wholly new. And friends, I'm just going to say, if you have not accepted that truth in your lives, if you are still holding on to part of this degrading foundation, I invite you to let go of it. Let go of the things that hold us back. Let go of the things that hold us to our own past and reach forward into the future because God has a plan for you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. It's plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope for the future. Because if we held Saul to when he was Saul... We would not have Paul today. We would not be able to learn from this man's achievements. If we held each of us at our worst days, we would not have the joy that comes from the bright days ahead that we've experienced now. We have been made holy in Jesus Christ. And even though all of creation around us will one day be done away with, this world will no longer exist, and the new Jerusalem will be here, God invites us to be new creations in that as well, to spend eternity with him. So what is our mission at Pathway Church? We are called on a mission to be his hands, his feet, his church, wherever we go, whether it is within these walls, whether it is in our schools, whether it is our workplaces, whether we are being called to be sent somewhere in the world that makes us nervous, we are called to let people know of this new life that is offered through Jesus Christ. We are a family of believers helping all pursue the way, seek the truth, and find new life in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you that none of us deserve the gift of salvation you offer, but you give it to us freely and willingly. Let us if we have not already, grab hold of that truth. And if we have held on to that truth for our entire lives, let us take it and be emboldened and share it with the world around us because you are in the business of reconciling us back to you. And God, help us reconcile with each other when we do not see eye to eye. It's in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you all that every week as part of our service, we do take up an offering. That is how we invite you to partner in the missions and the ministries here at Pathway Church. If you've not already done so, we have an offering plate at the back, but we also have our QR code on our gift cards in front of you, or you could go to our website. Again, we invite you to partner with us in the missions and the ministries that we attempt to do here. During this next song, you all should have picked up a communion element on the way in. If you didn't, raise your hand and we'll bring you one during this song. But during this next song, I'm going to invite you to reflect on what Jesus has done with you and how in your hand you hold the bread of life and the blood that washes us clean. I'm going to invite you on your own to take communion during this next song. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy. Till all my fears have gone And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Let's stand and continue to sing together. There is forgiveness flowing down from where the Savior died the son of man upon the tree exchanging death for life see him there in innocence the body and the blood behold the king crucified spotless lamb of God
There's a lot of things that resonated with what Will said this morning, resonated with me. I just know that, um, no, I do not want everybody to know what I did when I was 18 years old. Or 22, or, you know, pick the year. Pick the year. I do not want you to know that. I want you to judge me from what I woke up today to do, because that's about all I control, can control anyway. Every day is a new creation. Every day we are daily asked to take up our cross, to take up the burden, not by ourselves. We're not covering, you know, like when you carry something really heavy, like when you're the dad and you got the ladder and you got the heavy end of the ladder and your son or whoever is on the other end is like, oh yeah, I got it. <laughs> because of where it's balanced, right? That's what we've got. That's all, that's all we need is the, the light end of the cross that we take up every day because God has got the rest. And that's a good truth. Let's uh, sing a final song together.
worship music with us this morning. Hope you have a great afternoon. Before you get ready for football, check out the rubbish you've got. I mean, rummage, rummage you have in your house, and we'll see you here with it. Amen. <laughs>